Hi, everybody, and welcome to the IROC Knits podcast. This is episode 52. My name is Corey Eichelberger, and it is the two year anniversary of the day that I first started this podcast. It was the end of August, just two years ago, and I have maintained consistency, <laughs> if nothing else. Every other Tuesday, I have put up a podcast. That was my goal, was to stick with it every year to recommit and make it happen. So for those of you who have stuck with me this entire time, it's amazing. I have a real surprise for you today. My mom is gonna be on the podcast with me and I have a real affinity and love and great relationship with my mother. And she's been really struggling during this pandemic. She's been super lonely and down and <clears throat> has really, really struggled. Um, staying home, not seeing people. And so I, I will let her tell that part of the story. Um, we recorded for about an hour this morning. I hope that it can bring you just a tiny bit of the joy that it brought me to talk with her about how I grew up around a little bit of crafting and some sewing and her influence on me in that way. Uh, I have always wanted to have her on the podcast and it was just a special moment this morning to do that with her. But I'm gonna do a few things here so the podcast doesn't get too long. We won't um, have a uh, sweater of the week or shawl of the week this week. But I will tell you that I am wearing the three in one sweater and I will put a picture in for all of you to see it. This is a novelty yarn sweater and done in linen stitch. So basically, uh, slip, purl, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, all the way across every row using three different kinds of yarn. So there is a uh, kind of a ladder yarn, there's a flag yarn, and then there's also kind of a sparkly nylon yarn in this. I will try to take a close-up picture so you can really see but you alternate, so you go across with one of the yarns, come back with the second, go across with the third, and then go back to the first yarn, the second yarn, the third yarn, and you're slipping and knitting the entire way. It's a great fitting little top, it's kind of cropped. I had someone help me add this crocheted trim because I knit this a number of years ago and I would not have been capable of doing that around the edges, but I, I really like this top a lot. Um, it, it looks great over a dress. It is still very sparkly from the days of novelty yarn, um, but I would highly recommend it. I would love to see it knit up in a linen um, or as well as maybe a cotton or a wool and using more solid colors. I think it would be an interesting uh, look for that. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. Um, it's my mom's favorite color, blue. And so she was gonna wear a blue sweater. So I grabbed a blue sweater from my closet as well. Uh, let's do an audiobook of the week. I am in the middle of an audiobook that I'm loving. So even though I'm not done with it, I thought I would share it this week. It's called The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. And I think a lot of you are probably fans of or have read uh, Kate Morton's novels, but I will uh, read a little descriptor for you. 38-year-old Cassandra is lost, alone, and grieving. Her much-loved grandmother, Nell, has just died. Cassandra, her life already shaken by a tragic accident 10 years ago, feels like she has lost everything known, known and dear to her. But an unexpected and mysterious bequest from Nell turns Cassandra's life upside down and ends up challenging everything, even everything she thought she knew about herself and her family. Inher inheriting a book of dark and intriguing fairy tales. It, it is so interesting, probably took me a chapter and a half to really get into it and now I just wanna to listen to it all the time. So I would highly recommend <clears throat> The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. It is 20 hours and 38 minutes, which is why I haven't finished it. Uh, I've been really busy um, finishing up the ebook and getting um, things ready for that. And this came out in 2008, so it's an old one. So many of you have probably already read it, but if you haven't, there's kind of a mystery, it's kind of dramatic, it's good storytelling. I'm just really enjoying it, so I thought I would share that.
I have a podcast recommendation for you. I caught the first episode of Not Your Average Podcast with Max and Abby in Calgary, and they are starting strong because since I watched that, I think they've put up one or two more podcasts. So I think they are doing um, weekly here to get started. They have a great story about um, moving to a new city, meeting one another at a a knitting event, both being involved in music um, and the arts. Max is in the symphony and Abby was an opera singer, um, music teacher, uh, so kind of a fascinating background. So that's a brand new podcast that just got started called Not Your Average Podcast. So I'd recommend that one. I have a couple of special notes this week. So apparently we have a few widows who watch this YouTube channel and someone has put out a request to have kind of those people maybe get together um, online and have a little bit of a community, a little support group, a little talking, some chatter. So I am going to put a thread in the Ravelry group for now until I figure out a different place to host you all. I really wish I wouldn't have to host it on Ravelry for right now in case someone can't get on Ravelry, but I'm going to make a group um, that's going to say I rock knits support group or chatter group or something like that and so if you would like to go over there and introduce yourself and then you can privately share emails with one another a couple of people put their emails in the comment thread of YouTube and that's fine with me I don't have any problem with that I don't think people are really out and about looking for emails under I rock knits comments so I don't I mean I don't think that there's a real privacy issue going on there but I want to make it a place where people feel like that they can share if they choose to. So a couple of you um, want to be supportive of those people who have just lost husbands and um, a couple, someone who has just, or is recently, or maybe even not recently, but is a widow said, wouldn't it be nice if, you know, the three of us could chat a little? And I that would be wonderful I think that would just be amazing so I'm gonna let that kind of happen organically if it does it does I'm not gonna push it to happen if you want to go over to the Ravelry group and and do that and if you can't do it in the Ravelry group I could set up a Facebook group that would be another option that's just another platform that I don't know if people have so we'll just we'll just feel it out see how it happens comment below and let me know if this doesn't work for you and you want it to (laughs) Or um, if you have a better idea of where um, this small group of people who want to support one another, maybe knit together, um, just have chatter every few days, nothing formal. I'm not setting up, you know, a bunch of meetings or anything like that. It's just a couple of people reached out and said that they would really like to, you know, maybe it would even be turn into an emailing only situation or a snail mail situation. That's fine with me too. Whatever works. Um, I have gotten a bunch of comments about people going over and using Pinterest to pin some of my patterns and I just think that's great. So I hired this gal to work with me for 30 days (laughs) to teach me how to do some of the things I need to know. And she's helping me set up some hashtags and some um, blank pins that I can drop some of my patterns into um, for putting out there and so we're working on it I just got my first update from her and I just want to say thank you so much for helping me out with that beautiful platform in all of its glory with all of its users Uh, I really am excited about um, putting up the announcement of my ebook out there and having that you know be out there so I just want to say thanks some of you are avid Pinterest users and you pinned your favorite patterns of mine and I just think that's so nice of you so thank you very much for that I need to put a a shout out here for Angela and Sarah I had a bit of a kerfuffle with some of my test knitters for the ebook, and I had a lack of communication from them about the fact that they weren't going to be able to complete the item. So I went out on a call last week saying, "Hey, I haven't gotten your reporting sheet. I don't, you know, could you send it to me?" And I kind of got 
ghosted, no response from several people. And I, I, I was really frustrated, I'll, to be honest. Um, when people sign up with you, then you hope that they are going to follow through. And if they can't, no problem, but just send an email and let me know before the deadline. <laughs> So that I can know that, hey, I, I can't get this knit. Something came up. I'm not going to be able to do it. And so I was really in a panicked situation last week. And I sent an email out to 30 close friends and knitters <laughs> and just said, Is, can anyone knit a cowl in the next week? Can anyone do a color work? I need someone to help me with this skirt issue. I, I was just reaching out to friends. And honestly, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't get a lot of response and I was desperate. I was like, what am I gonna do? I need someone to at least look at this pattern besides my tech editor because I had made some changes to it. As per her extraordinary self, Angela stepped up as she has done for me once before in a huge crisis and said, I can get this done. And then I got a, a second person over the weekend who said, hey, did you find anyone? I, I'll try to help you out. And I just can't even tell you what a relief that took off of me to to know that I had two people who were gonna, you know, at least look over the pattern that I had made quite a few changes to and say to me, you know, yes, it looks good and make suggestions about what it might be missing because that's my biggest fear is putting a pattern out into the world that has a mistake or isn't clear or isn't concise, doesn't have accurate information for people. And that only happens via a tech editor and some test knitters. So I just wanna thank, would, would you all just give a little round of applause to Angela and Sarah? <laughs> because without them, I would be asking all of you scrambling and delaying the publication date and saying, can anybody, you know, get this done for me? And, but I have it. That part is under control now. And can I just say, Amber, the yarn hoarder, did the photography for me. I shipped her all the items, which is so scary to put all your samples in a box and ship them to Illinois and pray that they get there. And then I had some test sample of people sending them theirs also there as well. Everything arrived, it got there on time. Amber steamed everything and they took the photos on Sunday and this is amazing it's so fun it this is the quirkiest weirdest kitschiest unknittable thing that you know most people will say i would never knit that and wear it but for me it is like a dream come true like it is fun it is quirky it is exactly what i would want to wear to a knitting event or a retreat or um any type a knit night a, a knit in anything like that i just think it just <laughs> all the words knit on all the items and the pictures are perfection amber was concerned you know because she is doing this out of the goodness of her heart and hasn't done fashion knitwear photography and you should see these models oh it's just it's so good <laughs> so anyway next episode i will be featuring all of those items with all those pictures and showing you exactly when it went into the ebook um i think there are two items in the book that most people will say well i would knit that um, and then there are six items that people will say only the proudest wildest craziest extrovert would knit those other items. But if you are that person, you can join my club when we will sit together wherever we go because I just think it's super fun and it's, it's exciting. I've worked on this since January and it finally, you know, in August, you get everything all together in one bundle and you finally say, oh my gosh, it's happening. It's really happening. And Oh, that's my afternoon job is to pick my favorites of all the pictures. It's going to be super hard. So I just wanted to, to share my excitement about that. We are going to have a knit along for the Knit Words ebook. It is called Knit Words, uh, one word. So kind of like afterward, forward, backward, knit word. That's what it is. Um, and so if you want to start gathering, um, yarn because you think you might want to knit something you would need little bits um, and scraps of worsted or sport so six of 
no, four of the patterns are knit in sport and four of the patterns are knit in worsted, I believe. I think I balanced it like that. I used brown sheep, nature spun sport, and they have a variety of colors. So if you wanted to do all the purples, you could order a bunch of purples. If you wanted to order all the blues, all the greens, all the reds, um, that's kind of what I did. Um, I kind of gradiated <clears throat> each of the items a bit um, to make them a little more fun. And But if you have scraps, um, this is a perfect project for that. You could just use up a whole ton of scraps of worsted or sport weight and uh, kind of split the difference there. Uh, Knit Picks also has sport and worsted that is highly, um, you know, applicable for these patterns and at a better price point than. I did knit one of the items early on in Malbrigo and it's gorgeous, but it was super expensive to do it and not, not the value, I don't think, of what you would necessarily want to spend. So I backed that one out. It'll still be a picture up on Ravelry of it, but it's not actually in the book now. When we started um, recording this morning, my mom and I did a little introduction, so it'll kind of feel like we're starting over, but I thought it would be best to maybe leave um, the Corey story, which is Corey talking to her mom, this week toward the end. So it doesn't specifically relate to um, knitting in any way, shape, or form for about the first half an hour, but then mom did bring all the all the sweaters that she wears a lot that I knit for her and we talk about each one of them so that that was kind of fun for me to reminisce about the things that I have knit for her I'm gonna do the hellos right now and then I will just attach the video of mom and I after that and until next week then um, when we do the preview of the ebook which I hope is all done at that point it should go live on September 1st that is still my goal and deadline borrowing any major event, life event that gets it. Away. So the hello is this week. Sherry Gustafson, Karen Murphy, Stitch and Amy, HBWT40 Marlene, Kelly Mathern, Mike Cockcamp, Candy Harris. Um, they told me that there is a skin on Ravelry, which is like a, a covering. And so when you do revert back to the old Ravelry, it's not the original Ravelry, it's just Ravelry with a skin on it that can help some people maybe with their visual issues, but not a lot. And people with visual disabilities, I have learned, will often have to put a skin on their computer or on some websites um, to help with some of their vision problems. Doesn't work for all people, but there are some people, and I'm just learning about all this, so I don't have all the answers, but that that is what I learned in the comments. So you can go read those comments um, from this last episode. Then um, Margarita Deverson, Julie Alberti, Patty Skaggs, the Anaisha, Michelle M, Beth Hoskins, Danielle Brown in Kentucky, Sharon Noonan, Bonnie Glass, Pat Howes, Anne Odluski, who is new to the podcast, so welcome Anne. And she watched a couple of my older podcasts, I believe, and rec realized then that she has my book, the Minnesota 52 book. And so that was nice to hear from you, and that always makes me happy when people say, I have your book, and I went back and read the stories. Um, I did write 10 or 11 new stories for this next book and in, I'm including them as part of the ebook only. So you will be able to buy the patterns individually, but if you want to get the stories um, that I wrote, um, some of which I tried to be very tongue in cheek and humorous, um, so I hope they're worth your while, um, I am only including those in the ebook going forward. Okay, hello is again to Olivia Mankey, Karen Busby, who um, went out and did some things on Pinterest for me, so thanks Karen, Kathy B, Georgia Chamberlain, Brandy Stoker, Tensi Marcos Bodker, Amso Crafty, Mary Case, Emily Doyen, hi Emily, she's a test knitter for me, and did an amazing job, amazing job, because she had to knit it twice, to no really no fault of her own or mine we just there was you know sometimes things go wrong and you have to fix them 
Um, we're not placing any blame on anybody here. Just know that someone stepped up and did a little extra in, in that relationship, Emily. <laughs> Susan Singh, Janet Robertson, Through the Back Loop, Jas Conrad, Pat Wagner, K9 Oodle, Penny Gilbert, who's from Cornwall. I don't know about the rest of you, but when I hear that someone lives in Cornwall, that is a very romanticized place for me. I just imagine that you can trip down the lane and have a spot of tea and um, everything wonderful happens in Cornwall. I'm sure that that is just from my reading literature that is very romanticized, but Penny, you'll have to chime in and tell me if it's just absolutely as lovely as I think it must be. Robin Gasser, Angela Jenkins, M. Moss, who told a story of bringing a meat grinder all the way back from England that they found in an antique shop when she was there with her mother. Great story in the comments. Stacy B, Butterfly Crochet and Knit, who is also a new viewer, so hi. Um, sign your name next time so I can say your first name, because um, I would just like to know. Suzanne Scott, Jesse's Mom 12, Denise Norber, Deb Vandermolen. Deb, I taught in a Christian Reformed community in Southern Minnesota for my first two years of teaching, and all the Vanders lived down there. Let me know if you are part of a Christian Reformed church or have family members or my uh, husband or um, if that Vandermolen comes from that tradition, because boy, I learned a lot and was uh, steeped in that tradition of all the V's and the alphabet um, when I was a teacher in Edgerton, Minnesota. There was a Christian Reformed um, private school in town, and uh, so I just have lots of great memories about that. And she gave me a great story about, um, after I talked about the audiobook last week about the Flint water problem that we have, um, and she wrote about a story of her aunt, who was Dr. Beverly Pigan, Pagan, who stood up during the Love Canal issues and got kind of berated, belittled, mistreated for her um, standing up for the rights of people during the Love Canal issues and helped those people to all get relocated. So that, that was a great, very interesting comment. So I thank you so much for that, Deb. And then Deborah Becker, Kat Montgomery, Nancy Johnson, Helen Henry, Marty Ide, Heather Wilson, Emma Butcher. Hi, Emma. And Emma, I am going to stick the line dancing video that I snuck of my class. There's about eight seconds. I will try to take a better one. I just I, I forgot to ask for permission. I was getting a drink of water. They, I turned around. They had started the dance. But I'll put that up at the end of the video this week so that you can see it. Emma and I have a love of line dancing together. <laughs> Christine Carr, Stephanie Haberman, Patsy Coates, Knit Takes Two Michelle, Carol Lynn, Shady Sue, Penny Laughlin, Carol Rabich, Shelly Holes, Luana Hendricks, Mary Danielson, Eileen Tamero, Jenny Davis, Lynn Langley. I think that's how you would say that, Langley, Langolis. I don't think you would pronounce the S, Lynn, but I don't know. Kat Gore, Patsy Coates, Peggy Bork, Glenda Bathgate, Joanne Goldenberg, Victoria Paleski, Diana Barnes, Sharon of Knit Style. Uh, Sharon, I watched your, what, your most recent podcast this last weekend, so I'm saying hi to you. Um, Rachel in Seattle, who said that the sugar maple sweater does not um, have a broad bust range. And that's super interesting to me because I knit that long enough ago that I probably didn't remember or didn't even look because I'm usually pretty good about checking that kind of thing out. My response to Rochelle was is a lot of knitwear designers got called out on their sizing inaccessibility about a year ago. Not even quite a, yeah, about a year ago, maybe even a little longer. And many of us heard the call and said, okay, we'll fix that. So I went out and upsized three of my sweater patterns, working with my tech editor to grade my sweaters up from um, the biggest size at the time was 50 or 52 to 60. And so I added several sizes to my three sweaters that I had out at the time and now I would 
moving forward, always continue to add those sizes. So I said, Rochelle, you should reach out to Karina Spencer to find out if she is has plans to upsize some of her patterns because that, it takes a while. And even though the call happened a while ago, like if let's say you had 10 sweater patterns and you did you know, one every couple of months, it's going to take you a while to get to them all. If that is not the case and Karina Spencer is not going to upsize them or isn't willing or doesn't want to or whatever, it wouldn't be too hard to upsize that sweater. You could certainly increase the increases, do them in double time for a few rows to get it to be a bigger bust circumference because it's raglans and then that center front increase. And I think it's done every other row. So you would either just increase all of those increases every row for a few rows to get to a bigger bust size, to increase it to the number of stitches, and that can all be figured out through your gauge. So let me know and we'll figure it out. And then Randy Barnes, hi Randy. Uh, Cheryl Lacemaker, Kathy Goodman, Hi, hey Kath, Kath's having a hard time. Um, those of you that um, have watched for a while know that Kathy lost her husband and um, she's struggling, so we need to lift her up again. Uh, Chris Osborne, hi Chris, I really appreciated your comment this week, it was very nice of you. Uh, Charlene Taylor, Joan Price, Ellen Jimboss, and Judy B. So those are the hellos this week. I just wanna thank all of you for watching each and every week. I hope that you enjoy this next section where I speak for about 45 minutes with my mom. Um, she is a wonderful lady who would do just about anything for anybody. She's kind, she's loving, and she could use a hug. <laughs> she could use a little up uplifting. Um, because of all the surgeries she's had, she has not been able to sew like she had in the past. And um, it just really hurts her back and neck. And so she doesn't have a, her hobby right now. And I feel, I, we didn't, I didn't bring it up during the interview, but I want her, I want, that, that would be really hard. I know I, that's gonna happen to me here in the next couple of weeks. I'm not gonna be able to knit. I'm not gonna have my hobby. I'm not gonna have the thing that I like to do. Um, and so it's gonna be hard. The days are gonna be long. It's gonna be boring. It's gonna be difficult to get through them. And so, um, yeah. Just think of her, will you all? I'm sure she'll watch this and say, oh, Corey, you know, you didn't have to say something, but yeah, I think it's just been hard on people, this whole lockdown. And the end is not in sight. I, I read the other day, the pandemic is not over just because you're over it. And I thought, oh, that is so true, right? I'm so ready, I'm so over it, that I would like to think that it's over and we can go about our own business and we really can't. So anyway, I'm gonna kind of throw it over into uh, the next segment here. Um, I'll just leave it at that. We're, we're gonna just go right into Corey's stories or Corey and her mom. <laughs> Hi everybody, and surprise! Welcome to the IROC Knits Podcast. My name is Corey Eichelberger, and this is my mom, Marge Schmidt. Hello. And she's here <laughs> visiting, she's gonna stay with me, and we went to see Kylie, and we drove um, over by her new house, and we went and saw her other grandchild yesterday. So it is happy anniversary to me. This is the two year anniversary of starting this podcast. And some of you have been with me for all 52 episodes, oh. which is amazing <laughs> that you have sat and listened to me ramble on and on and on. But today we have a little bit different show for you, and we are going to talk crafting and quilting oh. and sewing oh. with my mom and all the things I did growing up to kind of get me to be to the place where I am now. And then I asked her to bring some of the things I've knit for her because I don't think I've talked about all of them on the podcast. And so I asked her if she would put them in the suitcase and haul them up here so she had to bring a whole extra suitcase along. Oh, she did. So I have a stack of things here today that we're gonna show you a little bit and we'll just kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. That so welcome, good. Mom. Thank you. Welcome. Glad to be here. Yeah, she was um, <clears throat> been feeling kind of lonely during the quarantine. It's been hard. And a lot of my podcasters are 
or viewers are feeling the same way. Yeah. They, they're staying home. They're alone. A, cu yes. a couple of my yes. a couple of my ladies are newly new widow widowers, yeah. and so they're lonesome. And so we want to honor that and be aware that people are really struggling during this time. And here comes the dog. <laughs> so I thought we would start by talking about sewing because oh. that's kind of how I started with you. It is. Is yes. you know when I took. Maybe it was junior high. You always sewed. You sewed my clothes from the time I was yes. little. You sewed a lot of my clothes. Yes. I went to kindergarten with a friend, and we wore the exact same dress, right? <laughs> yes. Because yes. both our yes. mothers <laughs> had knit or had sewed the same tunic, plaid maybe tunic dress, and we had our picture taken together, I think, at one time. So mom always sewed clothes for us, right. probably only for me, I'm going to guess. Once Mark and Jeff came along, you probably didn't sew as much. I often dressed her like her brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which we... is two, she's, her brother is two years younger than she is, and now he doesn't like that. But <laughs> I did dress him in matching vests to go to church and, and even matching suits at one time. By the time I had my third child, I didn't have enough energy <laughs> to sew clothes, so he did not get any. Yeah, no, I yeah, I remember um, we have some Christmas card pictures where Mark and I are little and we're dressed similarly, and I think that was pretty common for the time. And I think you know Christmas card pictures where families are dressing alike yes, is still yes, kind of a thing, yes, you know. Yes, so that wasn't yes. all that strange. But um, so I would think my earliest memory of crafting with you is that we probably always had craft activities in our house and things that we did with you know, popsicle sticks and pipe cleaners and, you know, that kind of thing. But when I took stretch and sew classes oh. when I was in junior high at that shop over by Kmart on South 41st. That shows you how old she is when, it, when she talks about that, yes. Uh, yeah, because, <laughs> well, and I have a couple of viewers from Sioux Falls. Oh. So, hi, Jane. Um, she's the librarian that I spoke for when I went to Sioux Falls, oh. and she watches, oh, and she'll sure. often okay. comment, so she'll okay. know where I'm talking about, the camp, the old Kmart on South 41st yeah. Street, Minnesota and 41st. Right. I right. guess it would have been Minnesota. There was a stretch and sew, right? Stretch and sew was all over the country at that time. We thought it was wonderful. Yeah, right. so we would buy fabric, and then we took classes together, and I think you had to get maybe permission for me because I was so young. I did. I, to go with yes, you, or yes. did I don't think I went by myself. I no, think. no. No, and we made hip huggers. We knit, yes, we, we did, did. like yeah. low slung. <laughs> okay, this would have been, I was born in 61, and so this would have been 71, uh, 74, you know, right, so the height right. of the hip hugger and probably bell bottom flower yes, power. Yes. Flower power movement. But yeah, I remember that. And then I probably made quite a few of, of those things in those junior high years. Yes. And then I think I got involved in gymnastics at, by the time I yeah. hit, you know, eighth grade and I just lived at the gym. I don't know that you made leotards for me, though. No, I made uh, swimming suits for the boys. The boys always had swimming suits. Then they had a little pocket tucked in the swimming suit, and I would just send them up to Frank Olson Park <laughs> to swim, and they would have a quarter in there so that they could have a little treat before they came home. But um, I don't think I ever made Corey a swimming suit. Yeah, or a yeah. leotard probably. Yeah, or a leotard. Then. No, no. And we all swam on swim team, and yes. we took lessons yes. at Frank Olson, which was a bike ride. I mean, it, it, right? it, it, yeah. they're double blocks, but it's like four blocks right. north that right. we would go up to. And then we oh, we had a patch. Yes. You always would have had I would sew the patch on because yep. they couldn't get in without the patch. Right, so you had to have yeah. a patch. You could get in free all summer if your family brought you the patch, patch. ahead yeah. of time yeah. for a set price, and then you could just go. But we did not have to be supervised by an adult unless we went to family swim. No, we didn't. Just, no, we just yeah, went. Just went. Other I than, mean, that was pretty common. I mean, we ever, all kids rode all over and went right. all over and yeah. did their own thing. We're talking about the 60s yeah, now. So yeah, that was, yeah, that would have been yeah. the 60s. Yeah. But then you probably continued to sew for people when they needed stuff. 
<laughs> they would call, right? Yes, yes. Like if somebody needed their pants hemmed oh, or somebody yeah. needed a jacket taken in or someone tore their jeans or mm-hmm. you would, yes. you sewed. Probably still up until this day, you would you often would get a request for somebody to fix something. I just had a call this week for somebody. Her <laughs> husband has one leg longer than the other. And so when he buys shorts and pants, I shorten the other one so that he looks okay. Yeah. 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 So I kind of, that's how I grew up with crafting and getting kind of into all of that. And then did you ever do needlepoint or cross stitch when you were younger? Like, did you grow up with crafting in your house and sewing? Because I don't remember Grandma Winnie or Grandma Handy, uh -uh. great Grandma Handy ever sewing like or no like grandma was in fashion for sure grandma Mm -hmm. she managed fantals in sioux falls which we talked about the other night and Mm -hmm. she was in the women's department and then she ran a shop maurice's at the mall when that opened for many years and i did fashion shows for her so she was very into fashion and and clothing and we i grew up with her buying me outfits and things that all coordinated and went together but I don't remember her ever sewing or knowing. But our my grandma, um, my stepmother's mother, lived with us. And when I was a senior in high school, she and I bought a sewing machine. I made the payment one month, and she made my grandma made the payment the next month. <laughs> so we had okay. we had a sewing machine in our house all the time. Wow, I didn't I don't didn't ever remember that. Yeah. So and I should just preface that my mom's mom died when my mom was born and then two and a half years later he married a woman who then my became my mom's mom it was really the only mom you ever knew because you never knew Catherine but and then so you you did have a a stepmother and a step-grandmother but they were your mother and your grandmother right and you you lived with like that extended family the whole time you were growing up and then they had two other children they did. Yeah. I have a brother, stepbrother and a stepsister. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but you did. really never. How, no. When did they no. tell you that you're? I were you young? Do you think um, when they said when you found out that your mother had died? Because you wouldn't have known that as a small child. No, no. I think when I started school and I had to fill out uh, applications or something, yeah. that's when yeah. I, my dad told me. Yeah. yeah. That that had happened. So anyway. Um, part of family history there, you know, that um, back in the day. Uh, but then I, when I went to college, I didn't do a lot of um, handwork or anything like that. But I had done some when I was dating in high school because I had a couple of little framed pieces, one that had a rainbow and it said, God is love, and one oh. that said, I, I will love you or something. I, you know, so, and then I had a cross stitch piece when I first, I, that I hung in an apartment. That's what I remember oh, okay. is that in my bedroom, okay. remember I had all that rainbow stuff? Yes. Remember I had <laughs> rainbow bedspread, rainbow uh, hanging on the wall, rainbow yes, pillowcase, yes. Rain, yeah, yeah. I mean everything when I went to college. It was all rainbow and I had this, I had a little needlework, might have been cruel at that time. But then when it really started when I moved in with Julie because Julie was a huge cross stitcher right, yes. and needle pointer. And so, and we lived about an hour from my folks when we first started teaching. Um, I met her when I moved to this small town in Southern Minnesota, it's called Edgerton. It's about an hour from Sioux Falls and about a half an hour or so from where you grew up. You yes. know, Worthington, Fulda, that lower yes, part of right. uh, southwest Minnesota. And Sioux Falls is just across the border for I have people that watch from all over the world, mm-hmm. so they won't even like know the ge- geography of that. But I started, I got a job teaching in this small town, um, and I taught 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade English. I was the only English teacher, and then I did the yearbook and the play and the newspaper and the cheerleaders. We did all the stuff because there was nothing in this town. I mean, nothing to do. It was a farming community. Uh, It was very small. And I met Julie and we moved in together. So we did have time at night and, you know, on the weekends and in the summer. She taught in the elementary school and she taught special ed. She was the special ed teacher. Mm -hmm. 
And then we we cross stitched a lot. Do you remember those big books I made with all yes, the DMC yeah, floss yeah, in them, yeah. braided and everything? And then I had needle I needle pointed quite a bit then and did a lot of cross stitch during that time. But I think you were probably starting to quilt. When did you start quilting? What the boys would have been out of the house, maybe? Probably. When you took classes, or was Jeff maybe home when you started taking? Jeff was, our youngest was home when I was, uh, yes. Because he sh saved all of his t-shirts, because I was supposed to make him a, a blanket, you know, and I, <clears throat> he saved them, you know, in the drawer, and, and uh, I did right. get one made for Kylie. I never did get one made for Jeff, but. <laughs> and Corey probably doesn't remember, but she made ties for my dad and her dad. Wow. You know, you were in junior high. And we could make ties, and ties were expensive back then. And I had a pattern, and one Christmas Eve, she was down in the basement when everybody else was still eating upstairs. She did not have her presents done. Her ties were not ready. <laughs> and, and ties, you know, most of the men bought their ties, and so they were very expensive, but yeah, these that's were, funny. These were very special to your grandpa and my your dad. dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, where I would have made that. Mm -hmm. But then you eventually wanted to get into quilting. Yes. And so you took classes. I did. At was it a Joann's or where was it at the mall where you took it? Was that the Western Mall? Before Joanne's I, fabrics. Yeah, and the I'm mirror. trying to think what else. Well, there were probably a couple of specialty there shops, were, yes. quilt shops, because there was that one that was out on Western that had yarn. Yes. For a while, yes, and I would come did. home, and they would have fabric, I think, yes. and yarn. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, when I was that was many years ago. Wow. Yeah. But then you quilted for a number of years. I did. You made a lot of table runners and placemats and, and, and Hancock that. fabric was one oh. in Sioux Falls too. It's closed now but yeah. um, they had a lot of classes and I took a lot of their classes and you would make um, a square um, a week and then every week oh, you yeah, would make another right. square. Go in and learn. Keep it in my little packet and then so when I would go in we'd learn a new stitch so then every Square had a different stitch that I had learned at Hancock Fabrics. The type, same, a change in material too, and change in color. Yeah. When you had your first sewing machine, do you remember if it was a Singer? Because I remember you always having that white Singer mm -hmm. that maybe had some pink on it or some blue on it. You know, it was a not a huge machine, but it was a Singer growing up, right? right. Am I yeah. am I right? I don't know. Did you upgrade sewing machines while you when you were quilting? Because now you have the fancy one with like the um, letters. You letters, can do yeah. lettering and serger. Yes, it's a serger. It, you, you can just put in the cards and it yes. will make. And you can monogram. Yeah, like monogram. You know, the kids get a new shirt or jacket. Or my grandson is a mechanic and he wanted to have his name on his shirt, so I monogrammed his name and where he worked on that yeah because yeah. that that machine you got after i was long gone from the house i mean because i i don't ever remember you having that fancy machine when i was you know when i was home but you did you did have that and didn't you make christmas stuff didn't you make a lot of christmas stuff for people or not like i remember it seems like christmas fabrics tree skirt made a lot of tree yeah. skirts yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. wow yeah we're just taking a walk down memory lane here today, people. I'm just thinking about all these things. I haven't seen my mom in forever. Yeah. And uh, she said to my dad, I think I need to go for a ride. And he said, well, we can go to the dump because that's what they've been doing. That's where we went last week. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I think you can do better than that. And he said, where would you like to go? And she said, I need to see my daughter. I did. Yeah. And so yeah. she came. So I'm very, very, very glad that we got to see each other we feel me too <clears throat> that we're being safe and we're yes. wearing our masks when yes. we're you know we're yes. trying to be very safe and cautious still but it, it is nice that now we have we're in the same we're going to be in the same bubble <laughs> yes of people that we can <laughs> I, interact with <clears throat> I really appreciate it because sometimes yeah. you just need to see your daughter yeah 
And I understand that. I don't think I understood it as much until my daughter went away, right? Oh, right, right. Probably. Like you wouldn't yeah. know until your daughter leaves home okay. how how much that takes a little piece of your heart. And so I can now understand it much better that Kylie's been at college and then now, well, she's back up here, so we can see her. But she went to you know she went to college, then she lived at camp. Went to college, lived at camp. So once she left the nest after her freshman year of college she never really came home after that oh, yeah. there wasn't a yeah. lot of and I only came home the one summer yes, after college yes, and then yeah. I worked in my college town yeah. all those years so in and you really get lonesome when they moved to Virginia yeah I did Virginia, move to Virginia. is a long ways away <laughs> <laughs> yeah we and we've always been close I mean yes we, yes we probably haven't but it had that much since I was very, very young. I mean, I used to get yeah. very upset when we'd go shopping together. You know, that would be hard when the mom thinks you should wear this and you want to wear this and it's probably not appropriate, that kind of thing. That's, that's what I remember. But other than that, only the, Only been... the teenage years. Yeah. That was the hardest because she wanted to wear overhauls and... Flannel her, her, shirts. And her, and, and her dad and I would not allow that, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be a cowboy or yeah, a farm girl yeah. or something, I suppose. Yeah. I guess, you know, you're just, you want to just fit in with whoever, right. with whoever you're around. But I have a picture that I'm going to put in today and tell just a tiny story. About five years ago, mom and dad came up from Sioux Falls and we met at the general store. And I showed mom this picture yesterday. <laughs> and we, we, they didn't come to my house. They, we just met there for lunch. And I must have been out doing something that day or whatever, because normally you would come here. And dad wouldn't come with us. He would stay here with He's Ross. But this time, <clears throat> you came straight to the general store, which is um, in Minnetonka, um, a suburb north of here. And it's just a wonderful mercantile. And you can eat lunch, and they have popovers. And we, wa mom, walked in, and we had on the same outfit. So I'll put the picture in. We both wore a green sequined jacket, which was uh, Alexander Christina Al yeah, Christina Alexander. Alexander. Yeah, clothes, which we loved back yeah, yeah. in the day. <clears throat> we would buy them whenever they were on clearance yes. somewhere because we couldn't afford them when they were full price. Yes. We had the same purse. wasn't the same pattern, but we had the exact same purse, which is Vera Bradley. Vera Bradley, yeah. <laughs> and then we had on the exact same shoes, which were halflingers. <laughs> uh, blue felt with the little circles on them. And so we have often in our lives looked exactly alike. Uh, these pictures of us as... You know, we are the spitting image. The genes run strong, strong in the Schmidt family. <laughs> and most of the Schmidt grandchildren, children, Mark and Jeff, and grandchildren, have big brown eyes, full lips, mm -hmm. round, round cheeks. Round faces. Yeah, yeah, real round faces, yeah. round, round cheeks. Faces. That's, yeah. And that, that gene kind of dominated, <laughs> dominated yeah. in most of, the, yes. yeah. most of the family for we all look alike. But the women, which is really only you and... I and Kylie, we all look very much the same. Yes, we, we look very, very, very similar. Okay, so we are going to look at some of the things I knit from my mom. She brought a few things along, and um, so we're going to talk about what they are and whether or not she still wears them or wore them or what. <clears throat> this is funny because I have one of these in a box somewhere, but I haven't brought it out forever, and it is really cute. It is a side uh, surprise shawl, and it has these beads and these leaves. Can you see them there? Yeah. In the, in the yarn. It was in the yarn. You bought the yarn this way. It came in like five colors, like a denim and a moss green and then this white. And I think what happened is I worn mine and you said to me, I would like one of those. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> because I had made one. Gosh, I'll have to look and see what year I made that in. And then mom's got a little uh, clasp on hers that she pins That's it shut because with. I, when we go out to eat, I always take this along. And then if I get chilly, I just, I have yeah. a pin yeah. <laughs> already still in yeah. there that I just clasp across the front. And it's the perfect thing when your shoulders are cold in the summertime. Yeah. 
And this was um, a cotton or a cotton blend yarn. I'm sure it's not available anymore, but there are a couple of comp, uh, a couple of yarn companies that now still make things that have beads in them. Um, Tilly Tomei or Tilly Thomas, she has a yarn that has beads in it. There's you know yarn out there with sequins in it. So this isn't that far, but I'll give you guys one guess where I think I bought this yarn. I'm almost sure. Stephen B. Because oh, <laughs> he would have something. Oh, oh. I, I, I could be wrong, but because I don't have a memory. It's probably on my Ravelry page. But that, I should get that out because that's a nice little cotton shawl. It was easy to knit. The bottom just has yarn over knit two together across the bottom and then stock and knit. So it was a quick knit because it knit up on pretty big needles. And then when you got to a bead, you just flipped it to the front before you knit the next stitch so it wouldn't dangle on the back because it wouldn't make any sense to have any of them dangling on the back. And they do actually the dangle. They're not actually in the knitting. You, I didn't place those. So they were very random. That's fun. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things. And I always get a, uh, someone to say, who made that for, was that Corey? <laughs> <laughs> Most of my church ladies know that she sews for me. So, okay, I think I have not, I have not talked about this one on the podcast yet, and I have one. So we we will be getting to it because it's in the T's, and we're not to the T's yet. We are in the M's. We're doing them alphabetically. Oh. So we haven't gotten to this one yet, but this is super. This was a fun, mm -hmm. and I have a great story about this one when I show this one on the podcast. This is called Taiga, and it is um, designed, it has pockets, and it is designed for um, the title is for the taiga national forest in like alaska that's what it's oh, named for and yeah. it's a chunky to bulky weight yarn and i used a tweed black stone to, oh wow i'm really black stone <laughs> heather tweed bulky maybe and my yarn store my local yarn store in excelsior was selling it out i'm pretty sure and mine is green and purple and then I decided to try to make one for mom and it was blue and pink. And then I didn't have enough pink yarn. So there's a whole story that I will tell um, because I have two more for a reason when I, when I show this. But look at those great buttons. Aren't those fun? It's just got color work in the middle. However, uh, for those of you who, who understand <clears throat> color work, this color work is work flat. So you have to do color work on the wrong side because this sweater was not uh, steeped so it wasn't worked in the round and cut open. I had to go over and come back and that's a little bit harder to do color work on the back side because you can't really see what you're doing and oh, you're, you're actually it, yeah. doing it yeah. on the back side. It's kind of like having to sew something on the back side too. You know, you can't really see what's going on. But this is a really fun, do you, do you still wear this some? Yes, yes. yes. I try every winter to wear one of Corey's sweat, so I have all of them worn by the time the winter is over. <laughs> sure, yeah. So yes, I kind of put them in order and then I start wearing them. Oh, this is a good one. This was supposed to be the shawl of the day today. It would have been in alphabetical order, the P's uh, for shawls. And I just, I'm not sure how long we're gonna ramble. So we'll see if I do a shawl and a sweater today or not. But this is the Poncini by Stephen B. This is a great pattern. The only problem with this pattern is that the yarn that Stephen used is held double and it was expensive to begin with. Mm -hmm. So you had to buy the yarn and you know, if you wanted it to look like his. So it's a it's um, bee sweet yarn and it's made by a woman's cooperative in Africa. And it's um, cotton and mohair and I think they're, they have a silk, and Stephen was the only purveyor of that yarn for quite a while. But I joined a knit along, because mine's orange, of course, and it's real easy knitting, but 150 ways to wear this. Stephen did a whole talk on all the ways to wear this. And I entered a knit along, which means I knit it with a bunch of other people, and then you post a picture 
of what you finished and then you can win prizes oh. and I won the green yarn oh. as a prize which is oh. how you got one <laughs> because I probably wouldn't have afforded to buy that yarn a second time uh, maybe I would it was really it's really nice yarn it is and so it's a soft. fun knit so soft. and you um I love it it was it, it is an actual poncho um, in its look but it's long on one side so there you can see that but that's how I got the green one. And then the green was in my stash for quite a while before I finally said, I just need to knit that so mom can have one. Because it is a fun thing to throw oh, on. Oh, darling. Yeah. Yeah. You can just. Especially in the fall. It's wear a great it, time. Yeah, yeah. Wear it anywhere. Yeah. So, um, but I do think that um, in the next couple of weeks, we will be talking about the orange ponch ponchini. Um, but that is the story of how you got a green, <laughs> a green one. Oh, Mom, this is your February lady. Yeah. Oh. Is this the one you lost for a while? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is Mom's February lady. I think this is Cascade 220 Heathered, maybe. See how the yarn has like two different colors in it? I'll have to look it up. But it's, she's got the giant button. Oh, I need to stitch this shut for you because that's my trick. And I don't, I haven't, it would, if I stitched it shut and you put it on over your head, then this wouldn't pull right here. You know, when you put big buttons on yeah, and yeah, then it, you wear it at it. your bust, they pull. So I'll often take a piece of yarn and stitch mine shut down mm, the front so idea. that it won't be like that. So I gave this to mom five years ago at Christmas. Six, Probably. Uh, yeah. Quite a while. And then the next year... I didn't give you a sweater or something. I gave, maybe gave you something else and you said, I didn't get a sweater. And I said, well, I gave, just gave you, or maybe it was your birthday, I don't remember, but I said, I just gave you one last year, it was purple. And you said, I don't have a purple sweater <laughs> from did. you. And I said, mom, I knit you a sweater, it's purple. I know you should you should have it. Like, And then I literally had to get out my, my phone and we scrolled through the last, the previous year's Christmas pictures. And there you were holding it up like this. And I'm like, see mom, there's that sweater. And you were like, I don't remember that. And it was in the bottom of your sweater drawer. It was. Like it, it was does. under, yeah. it got to the bottom and it was underneath like a bunch of other sweater. Yeah. And you went in and took, had to take everything out. And I think that's happened to a lot of us as knitters. Yeah. Is like we have, you know, 10 shawls and we shove them on a shelf. And the one in the back, you never gets worn or you don't see it, you know, yeah. because you only look at the ones that are in the front. And so until you reach back and take them all out. So all of you out there that have a <laughs> shelf of sweaters or shawls or or hats or cowls or whatever, clean it out, reach it out. We're all locked down, so that'll give us all another thing to do. Well, I have six drawers for her, her sweaters, <laughs> and I try and put them in according to season, and that was on the bottom. I did not. I said, I do not. You did not give me a purple sweater. I know. You were adamant. You were I like, was. I would remember, and I, I would have worn it all winter. <laughs> And I was like, Mom, I know I'm not crazy. I knit you that purple sweater because I have two of these. And we have talked about this one on the podcast. So I have an orange one and then I have a maroon and gold purple one. And so I and I wear it quite a bit. And you, do you wear yours with a white collared shirt underneath I do. it? I, that's that's me. where that's, I got that. That's me. Because <laughs> I often will tell people, yeah. I just put on a white collared shirt, but that I got that from you. I like a, the look of a kind of. I do too. Yes white cotton shirt with a tight collar that's it's dark you know, material yeah yeah it's perfect it's, it's yeah. a nice look perfect so that's february lady well that's funny that we had a story about that one and then this wow we do we have matching ones of this we probably do mine looks fairly similar to this i don't know if it's the exact same color and i have um worn mine on the podcast and this is the co cropped cotton cardi and it is free on ravelry in one size because I knit it and then I wrote it up and I held three strands of cotton yarn together. And over the years, a number of people who are my size <laughs> have knit it, but I have been asked a number of times to write it up for all the sizes. Oh. So it is actually in my file folder to write it for a majority of size because it wouldn't be that hard to do. And with all the colors in it, it's really fun to wear. Oh, wouldn't you, you say? You can wear it with anything, jeans or anything, and it's perfect when the season's changing and you, you want to wear a sweater, but you want don't want anything too warm. 
Yeah. So yeah. I, I marled before marling was a thing. And I had all this cotton yarn that I bought on clearance at Skeins before she closed. And I, I just bought all the cotton classic, Taki cotton classic maybe. And they were, they were skinny skeins, but I had tons of colors. And I thought, how am I gonna, I'm gonna use it all, but how? And so then I just three strands together all the way down. Big needle, top down raglan, and I have two and mom got, top, mom got one. But I will be writing that up. That will be happening as a pattern because I did talk to my tech editor about helping me size it for all the sizes. And then I didn't know you had a purple hoot nanny hoodie. I guess I should have known. Mom's favorite color is blue, but I don't knit blue for you all that much. No. I knit a lot. You wear any color, but your I favorite do. color yeah. is blue. So she's got a purple hoot nanny hoodie. And I know some of you are still thinking you're going to make this someday, but it is a fun knit. That Latvian braid just really pops around there. And, and it's a hoodie without a pocket. It doesn't have a kangaroo pocket or side pockets, but you could certainly put a pocket in if you if you chose to. It's a um, raglan and uh, takes worsted weight. This is Malabrigo purple, mis purple mystery colorway, I think. Wow, mm -hmm. that's racking my brain. So, but. I'm not a sweatshirt person everybody wears a sweatshirt with a hoodie yeah i do not usually but this is my exception uh, yes yes exception well it's much more dressy yeah it's much more dressy than a hoodie than a yeah. hoodie for somebody right. that's 80 years old it's a little <laughs> i feel and i really wear it a lot and I get a lot of compliments on it so it's fun to have with a little white trim just sets it off yeah yeah yes and then today you're wearing I am. the add a girl which is um, one that I wore recently on the podcast, and it is a pattern from um, that came out a couple summers ago, and it is a DK weight held double at, throughout the whole thing, so it works up really fast on a big needle, and it's a raglan, and this is um, stockinette on the sleeves, and then yarn over knit two together for the body. In that regard, it's also very comfortable oh, because yes. it, it feels like you yes. don't, it doesn't, it's not, Fit it. It's not tight. Yeah. It's not constricting no. in any way, but um, you can kind. Of, it's one that I throw on quite a bit over s something else, right. like or take yeah. along. And then you've got the real sparkly. Of course, blue. Corey always has nice buttons. Yeah, <laughs> I do. And so she's got the. And Mom always matches her earrings and her necklaces and jewelry to to stuff. So, but I did put I put sparkly buttons on a. A bit of the add a girl but on my rainbow one I put wood buttons and that really um, casualed it down oh. is that a word <laughs> I make my own word but made it much more casual to wear that one because it has the wood buttons and then it's got the rainbow stripes on it so that I would definitely say and I've made you a number of shawls over the yes, years yes I have had a whole drawer of shawls <laughs> you know you made me that beautiful tan one with all the colors oh, yeah. on it. The color affection. Yes, yep. and I wrap that around me, and oh, that's really, yeah. And then you have a red one. I you do. have a red, that's the moon dance one. So you have a, a, not only a sweaters that I've knit for you, because I almost always try to knit you a sweater ear. I mean, that's yes, usually, you, I, you either get it for Mother's Day or your birthday. Birthday or, or Mother's Christmas. Day, yes, yeah, yeah, I, I try yeah. To, to knit you a sweater a year. And then I have the a ski sweater. Oh yeah, but you the, every, everybody yeah. has the yeah. ski sweater. So yeah, the I orange, thought, the orange, yeah, the purple and orange you one. Didn't yep, yep, see no, that, that one. Yep, that zips up. The front. Everybody in the family that's a woman got that one, Corey, that Christmas. Yeah, so. yeah. So. so, but I was anxious to wear this one because it's so beautiful. I had already looked for a top to wear with it as soon as it got warm enough and. I went in my closet and there it was a perfect yeah well and it's, per it's perfect for you because of the blues and i used um leading men fiber arts on yours and there's it's a really nice yarn mm -hmm. you can tell it's soft and That's it has a really, really good nice. squish factor and yeah. that was i i did use that was a design that i did for that yarn company um where we held the dk double and marled it 
Well, I really appreciate you being on the podcast today. I love being it's here. So super nice. I love you. <laughs> I'm so glad yeah, I no, got to come. I know. It's been great. And we um, normally, Mom and I would head to the mall and go shopping and walk all over, but we're not doing that these days too much. No, we're, no. you know, just trying to stay closer to home and, and hunker down until it's over. And I, we were talking last night about how the days are slow, but the months are going quickly. Quickly, yeah. Because <clears throat> July flew by. Just it was the Fourth of July, and then and but when you're sitting in the middle of July, it doesn't feel fast. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it feels no, really slow. I, it feels really slow. Yeah, I've gotten down a little bit this summer. Yeah, and um, so I've had to really do things to uh, make me feel more alive. <laughs> I go yeah. outside walking. I love to walk. That really helps. I I have friends that walk with me, which really helps. Yeah. Um, Are you still walking with Irene Ampar? Yes. And can you keep up? Cause yes. They, yes, I that's can. Pretty, that's, Mom's had a couple of surgeries recently, and, and some of you know that because I've asked for prayers for her when she was up here and having her back surgery and stuff, but um, they motor. They do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, from I remember I, when I go home at the holiday or Christmas, I've walked at the, in the mall with you. We've At the old mall where we've been mall walkers, mm -hmm. and... They move along. They move pretty so. fast, but yeah. Um, but Irene is a, a cancer cancer survivor, and so um, it's not as easy for her. And then my friend Barb just had her hip replaced, and oh, so right. that kind of slows them down. <laughs> thank, I've he had, thank heavens. <laughs> I've had everything replaced, and so yeah. But that's good, and that's good fellowship. I really enjoy the fellowship, and my Bible study is starting to. Get meet back. now and so um there looks like a light at the end of the tunnel and that makes me thankful yeah for sure yeah you guys um have lived in that neighborhood since i was a baby or oh, no since i was five you kindergarten i went to kindergarten when you Jeff moved into was. that house mm -hmm. and and uh and you have been in that neighborhood with those same lady neighbors. Now, some people have moved away and, and, and you know. Not very many. But <laughs> you have, like, you know, Barb and Jody and um, who lives way at the top of Jeanette. the hill? Jeanette Ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Irene. And, Irene. yeah, so you have a, a lot of women in your life who you have known for 40, 40, 50 years that, you know, you've been able to maintain friendships Friendship. With over. You could call... I could call any of them. They would do At any given anything. That, yeah. That's what our... And we all built the houses new when we moved in. So then we all got old at the same time. <laughs> Unfortunately, now um, it's a little harder because some of the some of us can't do what we did before. But Yeah, because you all would have had... Like I'm thinking about kids. You would have all had young kids at that time. We did. Because yeah. there were... A, a number of kids just younger, just a little younger than me, but like, you know, um, Mark's age and, and Jeff's not, and a little older than Jeff, but you all were about of the same starting out in yeah. life, you know, young couples with young kids in a new neighborhood and a new development that is now like an old neighborhood. I mean, in Sioux Falls, yes, people yes, would say, yeah. oh, you know, yeah, we know right where Churchill Avenue is because they have the churches on Churchill there, but yeah. Um, people will drive up and down at Christmas and I, so they are yeah. aware of where you're at but it you know people now would say oh well that's you know that's neighborhood's been there for 50 years which is about right and then dad had the neighborhood drugstore yeah which how far would the drugstore have been from our house like I don't have a mile good, okay is that all mm -hmm. wow just a mile yeah yeah felt yeah. it felt further when you were a little kid you know felt like it was a long way but he um my dad's drugstore was in Hilltop, for anyone who is in, if familiar with Sioux Falls. And uh, he was the pharmacist, and then we all worked there all, you know, all those years that dad had the, once we were old enough to see over the counter or bring pop bottles up from the basement <laughs> or whatever, um, we had the, the local drugstore until he moved and sold it and moved. But yeah. And now they consider our houses as starter homes because um, the price range has kind of stayed the same. And so um, I always get a kick out of that when they come in and look at, oh, this is a good starter home. This will sell fast. I thought, 
not a starter home we've lived here our whole life it's our yeah well you guys have uh, upgraded the house because yes, yeah, you added yeah. the whole addition on yeah, the back and did, yeah. finished the basement yeah. and put in you know uh, yeah and, and all stuff. yeah the kitchens yeah. yeah so you guys have upgraded you haven't actually just left it like it was but one year we had 12 <coughs> kids on our floor our, on our block graduate from high school at the same time 12 kids that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Small. It's and Sioux Falls isn't that small a town. I mean, it's a, it's a small city, but it's not small. So, uh, what's a good perspective? There are two malls in the town and three high schools, four high schools. Yes. Now, so it isn't a, a town with one high school. You know, yeah. it's a four high school town. That kind of gives you an indication. I think of how big it is. I wouldn't have any idea what the population of where I live now. I think is it's or... about two hundred thousand. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's an it's the biggest town in South Dakota. Right. The biggest town in South Dakota, and right on the border, in the corner of Iowa and Minnesota. Right. Like right. you can go this way or that way yeah. and get there pretty quickly to either yes. you know state border. So, whereas Pierre, South Dakota, is in the middle of the state, um, and that's the capital, and it's north some, but in the, kind of in the middle, and Pierre has got the stone that is the middle of North America. Yes. So, yeah. um, from the top of North America to the bottom, Pierre, South Dakota, is right in the middle, and then Rapid City is way across way the west, state, yes. where the Mount Rushmore would yeah, be, and yes. that's all the way across the flatlands. Yeah. <laughs> Flatlands of the South. Long Florida. drive when you're a teenager. Oh, yeah. Well, I used to, I was telling someone, I used to think going to Worthington was just the worst when I was little, <laughs> right? It was an hour in the car. Yeah. But we, we would cram in the back of Grandma's car or you or the station wagon and, and drive an hour, and it just felt like forever. Forever. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just, yeah. well, then we're never going to get there, you know? 10 minutes down the road are we there yet it that the time felt so far to go to Worthington because we when we were young we went over to the went lake a lot, yes to the, the lake, lake to, yeah. to ski yeah. mom was quite a skier back in her day <laughs> I was yes yeah, yeah. you was guys fun. Yeah. You, they did water skiing and you did tricks we did pyramids, pyramids and, we did seven pyramids with, yeah, yeah yeah when you yeah. were yeah I was a little younger back then <laughs> but, but fourth of July was a big one in Worthington at the lake. Yeah. And your dad always had a boat. Yes, always your grandpa had a boat. Yeah. always had a boat. So yeah. we could go because grandpa had a boat and we could we all learned how to water ski and grandpa skied when he was 70. 72. Grandpa, he skied until he was 72. Yeah. He was very proud of that. Yeah. He took off his toupee and, and came off in the water. <laughs> <laughs> and he went and skied. Yeah. Yeah. He skied. Yeah. But I also get my love of talking or speaking or telling stories from you because you were in speech when you were in high school. I was. And you yeah. were the state speech champion. Yeah. yeah. Back in the day when you were in high school. So mom went to a Washington High School, which is downtown Sioux Falls now, but it's not a high school anymore. But um, And so you would have competed. It would have been a part of a, a team yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that you competed in speech which then was fun when Kylie t took up yes, speech yeah. because we, grandma could say, Kylie, I did speech when I was in high school, so you're taking on that from from your mom. Yeah. Yes, and I was in drama. Oh, yeah. Which you probably see the drama. <laughs> I taught her yes. I, I got a, a trophy for that, too. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah, that was probably one of my first loves is, was drama. I love that, yeah. But you then you became a nurse. When you I graduated did. from high school, we should tell that story of you meeting dad too, because you worked in a, in a pharmacy, which is ironic, as the soda jerk. I did when you were fifteen or sixteen, mm -hmm. something like that. And you, but um, dad was the pharmacist. He was an intern. He was taking his internship there at that store, yes. right? And he was twenty-one or twenty-two, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you were. 16 ish, mm -hmm. and he asked you out on a date, and your dad let you go. Grandpa Ford. Dad well, was out of town. <laughs> <laughs> now the truth comes he out. He had gone to Worthington, actually. He had gone to Worthington, and and Don and I had worked together, and then afterwards he said, Would you like to go to a movie? Well, it, in our town, that's what you did, yeah. you know, and um, so, so then. And I said, Well, my folks are in Worthington. I have to go home to an empty house. 
I would love to go to a movie. And, and then you dated. We did and for five you, years before. Yeah, because you went to nurses training. I did too, yeah. And so you did, was that three years at the time? Yeah. Yeah, yes. so you did three years of school, and Dad worked, mm -hmm. and then you eventually got married, and you've been married for? 60 years in yes. June. Yes, yes. 60 yes. years it in was June. 60. We were supposed to have a big party. Yeah. We were going to have a party, but yeah. we couldn't have a party. But Corey and Kylie came over and took us out for supper. We did. Which was really nice we because none of us were going out at anywhere. that time. Anywhere, yeah. But we yeah. felt we had to do something. 60 years is a long time. So. And, and podcast viewers will know that that's right after my dad had his heart attack. Mm -hmm. And so we were worried that it, you know something bad could happen. And so I needed to go and see both my mom and my dad because they were going through some stuff yeah. at that time. Yes. But we did get to, and we will have a party as soon as we're out of lockdown. Right. <laughs> as soon as we're off quarantine and we can, everyone can get back together, we will have all the family together. And both my brothers and their wives and their children pretty much still live in Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. I have um, a nephew that lives up here in the Twin Cities, so we went by his house yesterday, and then, um, but I have cousins, I have an, an aunt, and an aunt and uncle who kind of live there part-time, um, and, and uh, a female cousin, Amy, so I, when I go home, that is still the place where you can gather a lot of people right. together yeah. and see people. It's right. not like everyone is all over the you know country no, and no. we can still get a pretty good sized group together for a we can, some type yeah. of an occasion yeah. so yeah so yeah although my husband announced the other day you better not make too many plans for christmas oh, yeah. because usually we have everybody at our house for christmas and realistically they that may not happen this year so yeah. I can't get my hopes up too high on that one. That would be hard to get everyone be together because yeah. not everyone's being as careful as we have been. And not in a bad way, but there are members of our family who go to work to essential they, jobs they that have to work, are yes. exposed yes, and yeah. have to go. Yeah. And so the rest of us that are staying home shouldn't expose them or be exposed from them right, um, right now. Right. That would be that would be worse. Yes. It would be sad to not get together, but it would be worse if we did and someone got sick. Yeah. That would be terrible. So because we'll, so. we have grandchildren from twenty to I don't know how the old is. Thirty. Andrew is thirty. Yeah. And then we have two after. <laughs> yeah. Oopsie children, babies. Each <laughs> ten, and they have don't remember all the things that we had fun doing with grandpa and grandma. So we try and do that, but it's been really hard this summer. We played a lot of board games <laughs> this summer. Yeah. yeah. You did some of it on over Zoom at we first. We did, Corey set up a Zoom for us. It was very nice, yeah. Uh, we got everybody on right. from all over and right. everybody chatted. Everybody and we should there. certainly do that again. There's yeah. no reason that we don't. I just haven't done it, so. Yeah. And we Facebook. FaceTime. FaceTime. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Do a little FaceTime because mom and dad have Apple phone and iPad. So they mm -hmm. have the ability to get on with people if they, mm -hmm. they need to. Well, I think we're going to wrap up this portion a little bit. We've talked for 53 minutes and <laughs> we're going to do very little editing. <laughs> and I just want to thank everyone for sitting through this little walk down memory lane with me and my mom. I thought it would be kind of uh, special to have her on the podcast and talk about uh, all things crafting kind of how we how we got to where we were today and how we did things so I I'll talk to all guys in a minute Thank you all so much for watching I'd love to give you all a great big hug I hope that this podcast provides just a little respite of of calm joy happiness laughter in your day uh, and moving forward and keep it colorful and don't forget keep your fork bye love you all yeah, it's raining. How come you think we need a treat every time we come in? Every time?
every time we come in. And you know where they're at? Are they in here? Oh, yes, they are. Okay, what do you want today? What were these? Salmon bite? Okay. That's it. There you go. There's one. This one broke in half. There's the other one. There you go. Good boy. That's it. Okay, you're hooked in Mama's knitting. So let's, come on, give me your foot. Give me your, <laughs> give me your foot. I can't get it up. How did you get that hooked back there? <laughs> Buddy, <laughs> it should just pull right out. <laughs> it's totally hooked. Somehow. <laughs> oh, buddy. Okay. Going in. You won't give me that foot because you're scared, but mom can't.